What's up guys, welcome back to another DGF video. Now today I'll be doing something a little bit different. This isn't a review, this isn't a time-lapse build. I'm just going over a workstation build I have coming up using some pretty interesting products. So you might be thinking this chassis here, yes, this is a Singularity Spectra 3.0 chassis, but it's a little bit different. This is their uh, recently launched enterprise version of their Spectra 3.0. You might be wondering, hey, what's that? What type of enterprise users would be wanting to use a chassis like this. So basically, one of the main differences is it can take whoppingly big boards like this Asus W790 Sage. Now this is SSI EEB. It is a workstation board, and I do have the original Spectra behind me, the 3.0. That one would not fit a board like this. Uh, it's kind of tricky. These boards can fit in some HX cases. Obviously, they're just gonna be a lot more wider. They're probably gonna fail on items, and if you wanna fit this board in the standard Spectra, it is going to fail on the power board that runs down the side. So their power board literally allows you to run short cables along into the power board, and then that power board then connects to the PSU. So they specifically designed this chassis for boards like this. Apart from that, the rest of the chassis is very similar to the other ones. You can get a distro for the top, distro for the front, and a distro for the side. And I've gone all out and got all those distros for this chassis. Um, enough on that for now. So basically, I just wanna give you a rundown on all the parts, we have some really awesome products like these Kyoxia, I hope, hope I pronounced that right. These are 15 terabyte NVMe SSDs. These can be incorporated into this workstation board by the SlimSAS, but you can also run these drives many, many different ways. You can get uh, M.2 adapters, so you can convert any M.2 slot that will connect into this interface. You can even get PCIe uh, cards that these can slot into, and then it drops into a slot and then you can run them that way. So I'll talk a little bit about those. We have some crazy standard M.2 NVMe storage. These are all from Team Group. I'll be running two of these because this board has a whopping seven 16 by slots. They're all PCIe Gen 5. They're all by 16 electrical. So some people get, get confused all because you have physically 16 by, so 16 by, 16 by, you know 16 by, they're basically the same as on the GPU, it's the full length slot, but they're not always electrically by 16. So a lot of standard consumer ATX boards, you get three, the top one's normally 16, the bottom one is eight, if you run the first two, you get eight and eight, and then the bottom one's normally four. So these are all 16 electrically, except for the second bottom one, which is fixed at eight. I'm not sure why, I'm, I'm sure there's a reason behind it, probably lane allocation, but they're all 16, except for the bottom one, uh, sorry, the second bottom one, which is by eight. So that allows me to run something like this. So because there's four drives in here, uh, you need to enable uh, bifurcation. So that splits up a 16 by slot into four, 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 four. So as you can see, that'll do four, 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 four for these. So you can set all that in the BIOS, which is really good. And I wouldn't expect anything less on a workstation board like this. Even some standard consu consumer boards, you can do that as well. So yeah, basically getting a bit off track, I wanna go over all the parts I'm using. Uh, we have a heap of water cooling. This new enterprise chassis from uh, Singularity Computers can take five 360 radiators. Yes, five, their normal ones can take two. And we have a heap of other cooling. So let's start with the Spectra case and then we'll work on some of the internals and then we'll go through the water cooling. So as I said, this supports workstation boards, has a lot more rad space. So basically, the standard, if you're familiar with standard Spectra cases, you normally get the one 360 in the top and the one 360 in the front. Now, if you're going with this side panel, this is an extra. The side panel loop, which is this one, there's a pump behind here, runs off the top rad and that does your GPU. Then the front distro, there's two pumps on the back of the case or on the back uh, side panel, that does the uh, CPU. But if you didn't have the side panel, you would just incorporate everything into the one loop using the rad on the front and then the rads on the back. So how this case can support three more extra rads than standard is you have this funky rad bracket. I'll throw a heap of B-roll up because I'm not gonna be able to show you how all this looks just sitting here like this. So this can take three 360s or it can take a Mora radiator as well. And this simply just slots straight back onto the back like so. I probably won't attempt to put that back on because I'm probably not gonna line all the holes up. So yeah, basically three 360s on the back, one in the front and run on the top. The only issue I think now is you've got a heap of CPU cooling because the three on the back loop into the front, which does the CPU. So that's four 360s and then the 
side panel loop, which is this one, which connects to the top one, is just a single through 60. Like, I will be using a 4090. These can take really thick radiators, up to 60 millimeters, so that will be fine for a 4090, but it just is a, a little bit unbalanced. I got four rads for CPU, and then one rad for the GPU, so I guess that's probably the only downside. I probably could try and rig it up a little bit different, but that's not how this case is designed to go. Uh, another different thing with the Enterprise cases, you get two pumps, you can't see them, they're actually behind this on the main back motherboard tray. So two pumps for your loop, not so much for the extra rads. A lot of people do see my builds where I have a bunch of rads and one uh, D5. Rads are very, um, they're not very uh, flow restrictive, they're one of the least restrictive items in a loop. Things like blocks and a lot of fittings are going to be your most, especially quick disconnects but radiators aren't that bad. So I'm assuming they've added the extra two or the extra one pump to make two for things like people going with multiple GPUs for their workstation things if they are water blocking them. Because say you had three or four GPUs and then you had your CPU block, a bunch of fittings, that's gonna be quite restrictive on your loop and not so much the radiators that are on the back. Uh, some other things is it does come with the screen on the front, which is a nice little touch. The other one I did in the back, you have to order that separately. And I think on most of their cases, you do have to order the screen separately, but it does come in the bundle. But yeah, that's pretty much it on this case. It does have the power board built in. So as you can see, the power board, if you're not familiar with these single added computers, they actually do power boards for a lot of other cases, like oh, 11 cases um, and heaps of other brands. So basically, as you can see, there are a heap of connections. They're all in and out. Mainly all the ins are at the bottom, so your power supply goes in here, and then you get very specific cables from Singularity computers that run in to the bulk of the connections down here. So all your 24 pin, everything goes in there, and then it all feeds up. So this is your 24 pin out to your motherboard, your EPS are here, there's also EPS up here, there's all your fans, there's RGB, there's everything in the right locations where they need to be. And it's not just like one, there's three RGB here, there's another RGB here, there's a bunch of fans, there's more RGB down the bottom, there's RGB on the side. So it probably not gonna cater every single motherboard out there, but it does a pretty good job on catering for most boards out there. Now for those interested, I've done a bit of an assemble video of this Enterprise chassis. You often see these built, but you never see someone putting them together. So I wanted to show you guys what it involves. Now it's not gonna be 100% perfect. It wasn't my first time putting this one together because I didn't wanna put it all together then dismantle it. So I was kind of following the instructions as I go because when I did my previous build in the Spectra behind me, that is a silver and blue one, when I did that time lapse build, that was already together. I didn't want to show putting it all together because I knew I had this one coming up. So I thought I'd wait to show you guys this one. If you aren't interested, you can just skip to the next chapter. But for those guys who want to see it, let's have a look.
Now moving on to the motherboard, I did cover a little bit before. This is the Asus W790 Sage. This is a beast. I went with this one because obviously with this case, they do have the Ace, I believe it is a bit smaller, but I went with this one because it is the big boy and I can utilize all of these slots. Now the CPU I'm pairing with this is the, of course it's a Xeon, it's the W73465X. Now the reason why I went with a 34 series, so let me just explain this, there's two types of uh, Xeons out at the moment, there's the 24 and the 34. Basically the 24 is half the spec as a 34, so you get less lanes, you get less memory. So if I was to put a 24 spec in this, I would only be able to use four out of the eight uh, DIMM slots, and then I'd be only able to use four out of the seven uh, PCIe slots, so you just skip every second one, they won't be able to be used because there's not a lane, uh, not enough lanes on those 24 series CPUs. So I went with the 34, the W7, so I can pretty much jam this board out. And this of course is 28 cores, 56 threads, and it is quite expensive. And I did have to pick this up myself. I did get quite a bit sponsored. I'll go through all the sponsors later at the end and thank them for contributing to this build. Now some other things on this board, it does have three. It doesn't really have that. You're probably wondering how many M.2 slots it has. Well, considering it's got a lot of uh, PCIe lanes over here, the 16 bus slots, they didn't really go too crazy on adding six or seven, something like an MSI Godlike. They just gone with two Gen 5s down the side, there's one, two, and then a standard Gen 4. So for me, that's not too bad because I will be running it decked out with these cards. So I'm going with, uh, I've got it over here. Um, I've got one more crucial drive coming. I've got two crucial, these are their the new Gen 5s. It was going to be all team group, but unfortunately the Gen 5s keep on getting pushed back, pushed back. So I went with what's out at the moment. These are the T700s. I think these do like 12K for the read, which is pretty good. Um, it's a bit better than the sum out there doing 10, but it does the 12. But the team groups that are coming out can do the 14K for the read, but unfortunately they're not ready and I couldn't keep on delaying this project. So two of these will go in the Gen 5s and then the Gen 4 will just be another one. As you can see, these are all of the Team Group drives. They sponsored a heap of these to go in this build. So big shout out to Team Group for uh, sending all those over. I have tested all this. I will be doing a time-lapse build and then I'll be doing a follow-up video on things like uh, some CPU benchmarks, temperature results, things like uh, the RAID test. I'm not sure how I'm gonna set up all these RAID arrays. Um, I played around with all of these RAID 0. It's not very practical. Once you do four, in RAID 0, you don't really get too much better than running two. You kind of hit a, a bit of a wall. And who needs something like uh, 20,000 uh, megabytes for read or even 28? Something like that is what I was getting with four of these uh, in RAID 0. Now, moving on to just make sure. Another thing with this board is there is no RAID by default. The only RAID by default is via SATA or if you have Intel SSDs. So basically what you need is this little VROC key and that'll allow, which is the RAID on CPU. You need this, it's about 100 bucks. Once you do that, you can then RAID things like the SlimSAS. All of these show up to be RAIDed and then the M.2s also show up to be RAIDed as well. So you do need to pick up that. That's really just workstation things only. Most consumer boards, you have RAID already with the Intel uh, rapid storage. So for the CPU block for the Xeon is the Bits Power 4677. Now this is quite new. I'm pretty sure this is directly from their Computex suite. Uh, that is the one they had on display. That They do have a new revision coming out. They did say the mounting is a little bit ugly. As you can see, it's like this brown color. So once it's in this build, that'll stand out a, a little bit and it probably won't look the best. So they're doing a refresh model. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how they actually get around the mounting here and make it look a little bit cleaner. And one inter interesting thing with these blocks and all the standard mounting for these new Xeons is the way they mount. You actually mount the CPU onto a carrier bracket that goes on the block. So you do your thermal paste, you mount it all on, and then you drop it all, you don't literally drop it, you then you mount it in and it screws down. So traditionally you go, uh, you take off the cover, you go CPU, you go thermal paste, then the block. So this is pretty much reverse. I'm not sure why they've done that, but it is rather interesting. I'm moving on to the memory G-Skill sponsor. I might pop out a bit of this, uh, eight DIMMs. Of course I wanted eight because this board can utilize eight channel. That's an, another thing with the uh, 34 series, but the 24, it can only do four channel. This one can do eight. So I'm not sure if it can do any difference, but I just wanted to uh, pick that up. Anyway, may as well utilize everything the board can do. So shout out to G-Skill for sponsoring this. This is 128 gigs. This is 6,000 megahertz at CL30. So that's pretty tight timings right there. And what I'm going to do, I've got two in there. I've got eight of the BitsPower double-sided memory heat sinks. Now these are actually for the LM2 pot. 
if you've seen my videos before, if I ever want to theme build, uh, clean it up a bit and I'm not liking the standard stock heat spreaders from the company that I'm using the RAM from, I normally just get either the RAM sides from Waterblock uh, memory kit or this is from an LN2 uh, kit. Obviously you're meant to put this all in, then you put your pot on top, but I'm not gonna do that. Obviously it's going in a case, but this really cleans it up and it does look really nice. So this memory, obviously it's gonna, not gonna overheat because you actually are meant to run it like this. Obviously you would have some airflow going over it, but these little things are just basically, I pull them off. They're, I would say they're a little bit of a heat spreader. It does feel like something, but it's not much. It's basically just a sticker, but this is the uh, Zeta R5, if you're wondering from G-Skill, but yeah, so these stickers go on there. So I will be ripping all of those off and then I will be adding all of these really nice bits power heat spreaders. And these, I think they should do these in black as well. They only come in this, I would say titanium silver color, but if they did them in black, it probably would have matched the board a little bit better. But in saying that I will be using all the same color fittings from Bits Power, so it should blend in quite nice. Moving on to the other storage I'm using, I mentioned before, is the Kirkcell. These are the CM6, so they sponsored these. Shout out to them. These are both 15.38 terabytes. I just say 15 terabytes. Now these can do like a whopping nearly 7K read and 4K write. So that's pretty, that's pretty insane. If I raid these two together and raid zero, that's 30 terabytes of basically high-speed NVMe storage which is pretty insane considering uh, things like this here. These are all twos. This is two, four, six, eight, another eight. So these two will be 16 and then this is going to be 30. Mind you, these ones will be probably quite a bit faster because there's a lot more smaller drives. Now I'm going to connect these via the two slim SAS on this board. So these are your slim SAS cables. Uh, you can just get these and that'll just convert the slim SAS into the standard port you need to run these like so, and then that just connects in there. Now, one concern I do have, I was testing these on a test bench, basically had the board all set up. These were getting quite hot. Um, this, you might be wondering why these look different. Uh, this is just a cover on when they have shows and stuff. You can take this off. They do advise to take this off because it could cause thermal issues and they might get a little bit hot and then that would skew test results. So they normally do look like that, but they just have these ones. Obviously it makes it look a little bit nicer. So when I was testing these, they were getting a little bit hot and like standard NVMe M.2 SSDs, the hotter they get, you're gonna get less performance. So over, over time, the heat will cause the speed to degrade and get slower and slower until they pretty much thermal throttle at a certain speed until they cool down. So it's gonna be hard in this case because these drives are obviously designed to be slotted in something like a 2U or a 3U th uh, chassis. And then you normally have forced airflow sucking in from the front. You normally have a row of fans. These all slot in and it sucks the air through. But basically on this chassis, these are designed to fit. There's two SSD spots right here on top of the PSU and one right here. So they're sitting right there. I'm not gonna have too much airflow there. I'm gonna have the radiator at the front with the fans blowing through. It's not gonna be super cool air because it is going through a radiator first. So what I'm thinking about doing, I'm either gonna try and get some water blocks made up for them, tie it into the loop, see how that goes, or I've just got these uh, aluminum heat sinks. I do have some copper heat sinks coming as well. So I'll do some tests and see if I uh, stick this on with adhesive thermal pads, see how they go, do some tests, and that might be enough to keep those cool. Uh, other things I haven't talked about, GPU, it's funny that Probably the GPU is probably the most least interesting part, but it is a 4090. Uh, it's kind of strange saying that a 4090 is the least interesting part, but to me, out of all this hardware, um, it's probably to me not as interesting as some of this other stuff. I will be using a Bits of Power. I do have it down here. Let's see if it is open. I will be using a Bits of Power block for that. Uh, this is actually their new for the Strix. I'm still deciding whether, whether I'll use a Strix or an FE but with their first Strix block, they had the ports at the very end. So they went out like that. I've done a few builds, but this is their new uh, revamped one, which I really wanted the traditional terminal on the side. Cause when this goes in about here, the way this side panel works is it goes out here, in here, out here, and then it goes up here and then up into the rat and does the loop. So if I had the ports at the end, it would have been very, very hard to tube up the GPU loop. PSU, I'll go at the Seasonic 1300 watt. The reason why I like uh, C Sonic, even a 1200 watt would do, they're relatively short. I don't have a heap of room here. The PSU will probably come to here. Then this is where all your cables go and that's where they plug into that power board down there at the bottom. So I did want something really huge and take up all that, uh, all that space. Another interesting item I got, I don't know if I'll use or not, is I got a USB card. You might be running, well, why do you want a USB card? 
only because the back of this Sage board doesn't have too many USB type C, it's got 10 and a 20. Now I'm currently using a, a Z790 Extreme as my workstation board with a 13900K and I'm having some USB issues. I do have like an external USB, like a, a RAID dock that has four drives in it. And when I'm copying that data over the USB 20 gigabit port, uh, my mouse keeps dropping out and I'm getting some random issues. I've spent a long time fixing it. Hubs don't fix it, nothing fixes it. So I'm trying to um, think ahead and beef up the USB I've got. Now this one here is a pretty good one. If you're going to look at expanding your USB in your on your motherboard, don't cheap out and get like a $40 one that's got eight yeah, USB-C or four USB-C. Those ones will not work. This is about 150, 200 US dollars. It is a, probably heard of Vantech, they've been around for a long time. And this is a 40 gigs, gigabit card. So it's got two 20s and they can simultaneously do 20. So I'll have 20 here, 20 here, 20 on the back, and then 10 on the back. Because most of your ports on the IO on the back of the motherboard are all shared. So these two will be completely independent. And that's why I picked up that, just so I can try and eliminate any USB issues I may have. Now moving on to cooling. Uh, shout out to Performance PCs. Uh, they've been helping me sponsoring a lot of builds recently. Uh, they've done some previous ones and they do have some more uh, they sponsored that I've got coming up. They have sponsored all of the radiators for this build. So radiators, I've decided to go with uh, all hardware labs. So these are the black eyes. So these are the 360 GTS. Now these are their slim. So these are 30 millimeter thick. They're still high performing radiators, even though they're quite slim. I will be putting the three slims on the rear. Now I could have gone something like 40 or 60, even thicker, because there's no limit on the back. But in saying that, I don't think I needed any more than the three slims on the rear for the CPU. And remember, the CPU is also going to have another rad, which is on the front. So it's gonna have four rads for the CPU. So I didn't think I needed all of, say, these thick ones, four of these for the CPU. So basically the three slims and this thick GTR for the CPU, and then the GPU will have another GTR for that one. So that's a total of five rads. It's gonna have a heap of cooling potential all up. And then for the fans, I couldn't go past these brand new Lian Li. These are the P28. P28 being they're slightly thicker, they are 28, and they perform really, really good. Um, I'm not sure of the specs right now, but I'll throw them on the screen. They'll do some crazy static pressure, which will be good. And I think once these are on the back, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, whether I blow in from the back or blow out. Uh, there's not a huge amount of clearance on the back, so I'll have to try and test and see which way is gonna be the best for airflow for this setup. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything I have covered. Once again, I wanna shout out to all the sponsors, Singularity. I just wanted to show you guys what this case is all about, uh, so on, things like that. Also, Asus for supporting this motherboard, G-Skill for the memory, Team Group for all the SSDs, Crucial for the other SSDs, the Coaxia, wherever they went over here, Coaxia CM6 uh, large size NVMe storage, and then the performance PCs and bits power. But yeah, I will pretty much get all this together I will get the time that's put out and then I'll do a follow-up video just to see how everything all looks and then how it performs, if I had any issues, if anyone else is going down a route like this to see how it all goes. But anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.